Welcome to Southport Wednesday evening service. We're glad you've joined us again tonight. Some exciting things have been happening since we have last met together on a large scale. And just to kind of give you a little hint, we have already reignited ministry to teens this past Friday. Had 16 of us in the backyard of the, serve, of the property and uh, had an exciting time. Ended up the night playing um, Ultimate Frisbee. Boy, this grandpa enjoyed himself and he was huffing and puffing and it was a good time. There are some other exciting things that we're going to unfold before you in the days to come. We are going to start this week one more service in an effort to return to normal. So Sunday there will be three services, a 9.30 in the morning service, there'll be an 11 o'clock in the morning service, and then in the evening there will be a 6 o'clock in the evening service. All of these services will be the same replication, so you only need to think about coming to one. Call the church office and sign up for which service you'd like to attend. They'll all be the same. Right now, as we prepare, Pastor Tim's going to lead us in congregational singing, and then Pastor Sweezy will be sharing with us in God's Word. Let's bow as we open our service this evening with prayer. Father, we are grateful for your blessings. We are grateful for your care and all of your provisions. And as we have gathered this evening in the middle of a week to focus our thoughts on you and to draw away from what has had us preoccupied yesterday and today, I pray that our hearts would once again be melded together in unity, worshiping you as Tim leads us in singing and listening as the pastor breaks open again the bread of life and we look into your word together thank you for your faithfulness to us during these times when we still feel so separated from one another in jesus name amen
have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, his cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Decide now to follow Jesus. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back. No turning. story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And it really turned my thoughts to the power of God working in our lives, and he wants us to get our eyes fastened on him and to trust him for resurrection from whatever gets us down. Rise and be healed. against your mind as your faith been sorely tried lift up your eyes here cometh your help it is Jesus for you he has died rise and
Well, welcome to the Wednesday night service and the Wednesday night message. All day today, as part of our devotional that we have been reading here at the church in unity, uh, we are in John chapter 11, and I want to begin reading at the 17th verse. John 11, verse 17. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. I think that probably of all the issues that we face as Christians, the number one issue is facing death. When people die, when we go through the loss of someone or we're facing the imminent possibility of our own death, these are issues that I think that strike deep to the real heart of Christianity. And Jesus is asking a question here. It's an important question. In fact, I really believe it's the question that defines us as Christians. Verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? I think that's the identifying question about whether we are Christians or not. When he asked the question, do you believe this? He's really asking us a lot. Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? He's not saying I've come to, to bring about the resurrection or that I've come just simply that you might have life. He's saying that I myself am the resurrection and I am the life. He's making it clear that he himself is God and that being God, he is Lord over all things. More than that, he is saying that he's life, which means he's the source of all life. He created all life. He sustains all life. He himself is life. And because the life that he has is eternal, death does not have the ability to affect it. Now, we understand that physical death happens, but physical death cannot touch the life that Jesus is talking about here. And I am the resurrection and life. And he asked, do you believe that? Well, okay, I believe, Lord, you are. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Do you believe that? That's a good question to ask. What about the, the believers who've already died? Many of them have. Some of them are given choices. Are you going to hold on to this testimony for Jesus Christ? If you do, we'll kill you. But if you turn your back on that and, and uh, say that you agree with us, then, then we will let you live. I remember one of the bishops in the first century AD had been caught and uh, he was actually on his way out of town and almost had gotten out of town and he just stopped and he said to the people who were helping him, kind of hustling him to get him out of town because the Romans were going to arrest him and persecute him and he said, no, I'm not going to run. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I need to stay here in this city with my people and stand with my people. And so after the others fled, he remained, and then he was arrested and brought in. Well, at the time he was arrested, he was an old man. And uh, the, the, the Roman uh, procurator over that area kind of felt sorry for him because of his age. And he said to him in front of the whole crowd, I, I have sympathy for your age, old man, and I'm sorry that this has happened to you. He was, at the time, standing on a pile of wood that had piled up and had his hands tied behind the back, and he was tied to a post. And they were going to set him on fire and burn him alive. And he said to him, look, if you'll turn your back on Jesus and uh, just uh, say that you're going to worship Caesar, then uh, I have pity for you because of your age and, and I'll be glad to turn you loose. 
He was kind of saying to the bishop, look, you know, and I know that this worship of Caesar isn't really, he's really a man, and, and you and I know it doesn't mean anything, so why don't you just go along to get along, and, uh, and, and you'll be all right, and nothing will happen to you. And the bishop's response was that for 89 years, uh, the Lord had been good to him and done good things for him. And there was no way at, at his advanced age that he was going to turn his back on Jesus and, and say anything against him. And so they set the wood on fire and burned him alive in front of a huge group of people. Many of the people who were there recorded in their notes that the fire had a sweet smell as he was burned alive. Um, we have Christians all down through the centuries who stood up for their faith and stood up for Christ and have faced death rather than give up on their testimony for Christ. And in the United States, that seems far away from us because we, we aren't really being pressured, although now we find because of this COVID virus thing that, yes, some petty uh, politicians are pressuring us and telling us what we should and we shouldn't do in violation of our constitutional rights. But we need to understand that we're not going to give up on our testimony for Christ because we believe that he is the life. He's the resurrection and the life. He is the very source of, of resurrection and life. And we believe that this life is not all there is and that this life is limited and it's relatively short in nature. And the fact is that there is a life beyond this life and, and we can receive it now while we are alive. The interesting thing I want you to see in these notes is that Jesus says, he who's, who believes in me will live even though he dies and whoever lives and believe in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now there's something else for us to believe. Is it true that, that those of us who are alive and believe in him will never die? Yes, if you believe that, that physical death can't touch the life that's in Jesus Christ. In him is life. We have that life because of our relationship with him. He gives us life and helps us to be alive. And that life cannot be touched by physical death and can't be changed by physical death. We need to know that there's real value and real resurrection and, and a real blessing to be had. I remember when I was a young man, I used to sing in a choir with 120 uh, people in it. And uh, in this choir... Uh, one of the songs that was picked out for us, if you can believe it or not, it was in a public high school, but one of the songs that was picked out for the a cappella choir to sing was, uh, it comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 2, and I want to read that to you. I'll start at verse 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit has set me free from the law of sin and death. And I remember that great song, swelling song we used to sing, Death, death, I do not fear thee. Uh, though you stand near me, grave, I calmly spurn you. We need to understand that this life is not all there is, and there's something more. But we can have this eternal life present right now. We can have that eternal quality in our life in a sense that we, we are not intimidated by those who threaten death and who say, well, I'm going to take this away from you. I'm going to take anything that the world gives, the world can take away. But the things that God gives, the world can't touch. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. And when we have him as our Lord and Savior, we do have that resurrection quality in our life. And those things that he says about it is true. I wanted to read something that Paul said about this, and, and I wanted us to think about it. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm going to start reading at the 54th verse. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? It's gone. Where, O oh death, is your sting? It's finished. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, because he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the power, as you see, it says that the power of, of death is the law. But listen to what Paul says again about that. Therefore, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. 
when we have eternal life, and that eternal life is given to us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by grace through faith, then the hold that this physical death has on us is cut free. We no longer are threatened by it. It's no longer something we need to be concerned about. And we're not going to let it rule in our hearts and our minds and cause us to fear. I have a number of friends uh, right now that I'm in contact with, and many of them are in late stages of uh, cancer, and they're struggling. And I am praying with them and praying for them. And if God doesn't undertake, uh, certainly they're going to die. But the truth of this scripture rings true for them, just as it rings true for me and it rings true for you. That we need to go on and live our lives and not live in fear and not be afraid of what's going to come or the death that's going to come. But we need to have confidence because Jesus, who is the resurrection and who is the life, he's the one who's going to save us and we don't need to be afraid. And so he asks us again that question. I'm the resurrection and the life. I am. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Here's the question for you tonight. Do you believe this? If you do, it changes the whole way you live your life. Go and live it in resurrection power.